Homelessness is a major issue in the city of Sacramento. But in 2020, in the midst of this pandemic, we've actually had significant success getting people off the streets and housing them. These trailers are part of Project Room Key. We are housing general homeless population as well as the isolation participants that are positive, whether they come from outside or they come from one of our other Project Room Key motels. Project Room Key opened up motels and trailer sites to house the homeless population so they weren't out vulnerable and exposing other people to COVID. It's Debbie and Nicole. Hi, we're just checking Hi. on you. Yeah. Just cooking and visiting. All right, My whole life just well, slipped. I never would have imagined this. Yeah. Been to this parking lot a million times as a kid, even as an adult for the state fair, other expositions. Now I live here. <laughs> that's, that's sort of odd. Sorry for crying. I had a great job. I made almost $93,000 the last year I worked. In 2018, I got breast cancer. I had to take some time off work with the chemo and the radiation. I was missing too much work. I wasn't um, an asset to the company any longer. So I drained my 401k and my savings and checking accounts. And then there was just no more money. I lived in my car and slept in a tent on the side of the roads, um, side of the railroad tracks, the American River, wherever it felt safe. This has been huge. It's a restroom that I can close the door and not have to worry what's on the other side. Getting COVID was the best thing for me as far as getting fast-tracked into this program. With Project Room Key, we got the motels up and going faster than anything I've ever seen government do. From thought inception to actual motels in hand and ready, it was maybe two or three weeks, when something like that normally could take up to a year. This is how we keep track of what rooms are occupied and how many people we have. And right now it's 196 people on site. Hi, honey. All throughout the day, we have people come to the door, they ask for hygiene stuff, or when the navigators are coming, or maybe they need a ride to a doctor's appointment, and we assist with all of those things. Hi, honey bunch. Are you hungry? Dinner? Uh, what you got? Chicken marinara or meatball stroganoff with noodles. How you been right. feeling? Better? Better. Yes, ma'am. You need a floor? Yes, ma'am. I think we can translate the success of Room Key into something much bigger and much broader. It's a challenge, but it's also a great opportunity. Project Home Key is that next phase to be able to purchase those motel units and transition them into actual housing units. We are in the initial stages of identifying sites, ensuring that we have the money to continue on and getting the community's support behind this type of effort. With a larger motel, say anywhere from three to 400 units, you could help about a quarter of our unsheltered population potentially at a time, which is a great investment. Knock, knock. Hey. Good morning, sunshine. Good morning. Good morning, how are you? Uh, I'm just stressed out. <laughs> we just found out we're gonna be half a, we're scheduled to, to go to a hotel on Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Yes, I know, but I'm over there too, so you'll still see me. Okay. The participants here are going to be transferred to one of our other motel sites as they're waiting for their housing to come through. I know this is the next step and I'm looking for that final step. Yeah, <laughs> I'm absolutely. Really, I'm excited, but I'm, I'm anxious. There will be a navigator in sight. Her name's Cheryl and she's awesome. Um, she'll be able to help guide you, you know, and what the next steps are to, to get that housing.
Motel conversions are key because you don't have to build from scratch. This project took two months, two months, from uh, the time we said yes to people beginning to move in. We've had uh, four new residents move in down at the far end. How much renovation have you done inside the units? Um, not a whole lot, thankfully. We didn't, we didn't have to do much. Mm -hmm. We can take a look here. Oh, this is really nice. Nearly ready. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so these were in fairly good shape. The, the, we had nearly brand new flooring in all the units. Mm -hmm. the, the cabinets were in good shape. We changed the countertops. Yeah, I noticed the countertops. Yeah. Oh, and we got a microwave. You know I get excited about <laughs> microwaves. <laughs> there are many reasons why people fall into homelessness. Supportive housing really meets them where they are, it assesses what their situation is, and then it gives them those wraparound services to ensure that they can move on with their lives and not fall back into that system and cycle of homelessness. You and I, we've done a lot of projects together. <laughs> I can't recall us ever being able to close and move people in within such a short period of time. It is uh, what we've all wanted to do for so very long. Yeah, and to actually be doing it is, is pretty amazing. Converting existing motels, these are essential parts of the solution. But another key part of our city strategy is to purchase manufactured housing where we don't have to build from scratch. I'm a huge proponent of the manufactured housing and tiny home strategy because this is a volume issue. We're here on a piece of property that we purchased through the Project Home Key program, and we're building nine units on it. The homes are um, manufactured homes, so they're able to make them pretty quickly. And they're all two bedroom, one bath, and they're all accessible. We are the Rape Crisis Center for the county. We serve victims of domestic violence and victims of sex trafficking. We've been around since the late 70s, and this is the first time we've moved into permanent supportive housing as an offering for our clients. We just started work a few weeks ago. One good thing about Project Home Key is it sped up how fast we got permits, and we got to skip some steps, which would have taken up to a year or two get us moved along. So all in all, it's going to be about a nine month process from when we applied for the money until we have people moved in, which is just amazing to me. People come to us for a number of reasons. Generally, domestic violence is their primary issue at the moment, but it doesn't happen in a vacuum. There's so many intersections that lead to somebody being homeless. It's poverty, it's lack of education, it's legal barriers, financial problems, and the domestic violence. So having a roof over your head becomes the primary issue. This is a permanent roof over somebody's head. Somebody who probably never thought they would have that opportunity. Through Project Room Key and our Project Home Key, we collectively have brought more people indoors in a shorter period of time than I think ever before. Why did it happen? To me, there are two key elements. Number one, it's money. It's the federal government was paying 75% of the cost. Number two, there was a public health order to get people off the streets because there was a strong belief that homelessness could be a super spreader of COVID. And so counties and cities that had never before stepped up in any significant way, stepped up in a major way. But once we're through COVID, which we all want desperately, you will no longer have that public health order. What's gonna replace it to create that same kind of urgency? In the absence of significant federal stimulus and federal intervention, we are at the risk of seeing a homeless tsunami like we have never seen before. We cannot afford as a society to have more people become homeless. I would do anything to go back to normal. I miss my job. I miss having self-pride. Being homeless drains you of a lot. 
people get the wrong idea of you just because you're homeless. And that's truly not what most of us are. We're just people that did what we could while we could and, and lost it.